we're just going to pray before we yeah. we do the this thing. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank, thank you, you today. Father, even as you want to tell us, talk to us today about growing up. Father yeah. God, we just thank you that you will speak through my mouth, through my yeah. mouth. Oh God. Father, yeah. that you minister to us. Oh God, yeah. how your heart cry for now. Amen. Why you want us to be active for you, oh God. Amen. Amen. Father, just help us. Help every one of us, oh God. Amen. And Father, we're including as many as we hear this message, oh God. Father, Amen. that you be a quickening. Father, you Amen. promise us that the word you speak, it is spirit Amen. and life. And that Amen. your word will not go back, we will not come back to you void. But Amen. you accomplish the purpose for which you have sent it. And do the things for which you are pleased to do. Amen. Father, that's our prayer today, oh God. That your word, God that you're sending to us today will accomplish his purpose. Amen. It will not come back to you void. Father, Amen. let your word transform us. Let your word Amen. transform us. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, oh thank God. Father, thank, thank you. you. The Holy Spirit that submits everything to oh. you, my mouth, my Amen. thoughts, everything. Holy Amen. Spirit, feel me to overplay you right now with your spirit and speak Amen. to me. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we are talking about, the topic is grow up. Grow up. And from our ma ma uh, Sunday school and all, you can see that that's what God is saying. We need to grow up. Praise God. Uh, so we are muting our mic, aren't we? And yes, we yes. Mute it. Okay. So our topic today is mute, uh, growing up, growing up, growing up. Growing up, John chapter 8. Let's go to John chapter 8, 31 to 38. John chapter 8, 31 to 38. And I'll read John chapter 8, 31 to 38. It says, um, The as is, um, 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed in him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is of the devil is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word had no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and I do that which I have seen. And you do that which you have seen with your father. So basically, we are going somewhere with this. Let's go to, these are to our two texts. Let's go to John 17, 17. John 17, 17. John 17, 17. And what did you say? It says, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. So we're talking about God wanting us to grow up. God wants his children to grow up. Actually, God is not happy at the baby stage of some Christians. Normally, if we have a child, and you are, you are good with doing everything for your baby. They cry, they are self-centered, they cry, you just attend to them. A baby is so self-centered, they can cry even in the midst of the congregation. Actually, the more the inappropriateness of the time, the more they, they want attention. And you have to attend to them. That's what makes them babies. So, but if now, that same baby, two years, five years down the line, 10 years, there are certain things you expect a 10-year-old to do. At two, at two, you want to do everything for them. But at 10 years, you expect your child to do certain things. Then not to talk of 20, 30. But if that child is still crying like a two-year-old, no parent will be happy. You know that there's something seriously. Your child is malfunctioning. And we don't look at God in that sense that God is a parent. God is our father. And when he sees us behaving like children, not wanting to grow up, he's not happy. And that's what we want to discuss today. And again, because of his loving kindness, his nature, he wants us to grow up. So what are the things that we experience in the journey to growing up? That maybe before, I've noticed that, okay, um, as the glory of God is manifesting everywhere, why am I not experiencing it in my life? Why is it that, okay, you come to a meeting, everything is so glorious, you see people falling under the anointing and all, but then your life is still stagnant. Why is it so? 
Then you ask, how is it that I've prayed for, I've prayed for something for so long and I've not gotten the result. Uh, some people go as far as even having um, anointed men of God lay hands on them. And yet, nothing happens. And they begin to feel, has God forsaken me? Then I remember when, maybe if you're in this category, you remember when you're a newly born again child of God and you're just asking in your room and God is answering you like this, like this, you know, instantly. If before you even ask God is answering. I don't know if you've been there. And then you begin to ask Christian, what has changed? What is happening? You know, and what God is doing with us is likened to the story of the ego. The, 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 it's recorded and it's, it's scientific that ego, they will put a, a nest for the baby ego, make the baby ego comfortable. And then the baby ego is in, comfortable in that nest. They don't want to do anything. When the, baby, when the mother ego wants the baby ego to fly, do you know what it does? It comes and removes everything around the nest, carries the child, that baby ego, and throw them up in the air. And the baby eagle is screaming, 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 thinking just before they, they feel that they're going to fall out and they're, they're, you know, maybe they're destroyed forever, the mother eagle will just swoop down and carry them back again and then throw them again. Until the baby eagle realizes, oh, I have wings, I can fly like my mother. And that's when the baby eagle starts flying. But you think about the process. Before the mother eagle would teach that baby, he made that baby uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. A nest is a, a comfort zone for a, a baby eagle. But what did the mother do? He went and disbanded the nest, removed everything about that nest. And that is how God does for us sometimes. That's why you are not getting your answers, maybe instantly as before. Maybe God is, as men of God have laid hands on you, God is expecting you to be the one laying hands on people now, not the other way around. God expects you to get your miracles by, by faith, believing the word, standing on it, standing on it long enough to see breakthrough. God is expecting you to be doing the one, to be doing those things that you're still expecting people to do for you. Grow up. Basically, that's what God is saying. We need to grow up. What does, uh, we're talking about babies. In the Bible, what are some of the attributes of babyhood? Hebrews chapter 6. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 6. Because a baby in the kingdom doesn't mean that uh, you can be born again in, uh, for 20 years or 30 years and still be a baby. If you're not doing anything and you're still comfortable, that's what we're discussing this morning, being comfor comfortable, warming seats in the church, taking up space. You're not doing anything. You're not really doing anything. You're not making your mark. <laughs> I, don't, I'm, I doubt your maturity because that's the truth. Uh, Hebrews 6, 12 to 13. It says, wherefore lift up your hands, which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet. Let that which is lame be turned out of the way. Is that what I'm, Hebrews 6, 12 and 13? Mm -hmm. And make straight paths. Is that where? 12 and 13. No. It's not what I'm looking for. Which number has that? Follow peace with all men. I think I, I got, I wrote down the wrong passage. But let's go to 1 John 2, 2, 12. 1 John 2, 12. I'll get the, the place. 1 John 2, 12. 1 John 2, 12. It says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for, your, for his name's sake. Children's sins are forgiven them. And that's the main thing. Because their sins are forgiven, that's the sins that matter with them. They can call God their father. Great. And that is all of us are still children before God. But the truth is that God expects us to move on after that initial experiences. And that's where we may not be getting the things we are getting before. You cry out immediately and you get answered. I remember some people would say, and you know, this thing baffles some Christians is like, why am I still in this? I've asked God for healing. I've, maybe brethren have laid hands on me. Maybe God is expecting you to just stay in the word of God. Meditate the scriptures and receive your healing through the word of God. You know the reason, the difference. When we get our miracles by ourselves, not by ourselves, but doing, you know, having faith in the word of God, confessing the word of God, meditating the word of God, is difficult for the enemy to steal the miracle from you. The reason is because so many people come to programs and it has been happening all along. And you think the problem is with the anointed man of God. It's nothing to do with the anointed man of God. The problem is with us. You come to the program, they, they, because of the corporate anointing in such programs, people receive their healing. But when you go back home, because there's no word, 
The enemy will bring you exactly the same symptoms. And the, the, the condition in your house is what actually predisposed you to those situations with the enemy. So the enemy will bring back the symptoms. And because you're still not grounded, you, the world is not in you. Because you remember that place we read in, the more, in the John chapter 8. It is the truth that makes us free. And we're going to talk about it. Because the world is not grounded in you, a lot of people... Once the enemy brings the symptoms back, they'll say, oh, I wasn't really healed that first time. Maybe I wasn't healed. You buy the lie of the enemy. You were healed. But because those people are not really, they've not uh, developed in their own faith, then it's difficult. It's difficult to maintain certain miracles because if you're not, if you're wordless, if I can use the word wordless, there's no word. You don't know how to stand. And you're still a baby. You don't know how to stand. And then you keep depending on people. There's nothing wrong with depending on people. You can't depend on people for so long. God is expecting you, if you have been in the, in, the, in the Christian race for some time, for you to start, other people to start depending on you. It's not the way the Christian faith is structured. It's not for you to be born again for five years, 10 years, you're still where you are. Yes, at that initial time, people supported you, Christian discipled you. But you're not supposed to be the one doing it for other people. That's the way it's supposed to work. So if your life is not adding up, you're not doing anything, don't think, don't think that the things around you is because uh, it's not for, God is maybe trying to tell you something that it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up in him. It's time not to depend on other people doing stuff for you, praying for you. It's time for you to stay in the world, receive your miracles through the world because the miracles you receive, the enemy cannot steal it from you. If the enemy comes, the word of God that actually gave you that miracle, for example, in the area of healing, the enemy can't come and say, no, 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 yeah, this, is, this body is not for you. Because you are already, you've gotten the revelation in that area that it's not God's plan for you to be sick. But if you don't know, you say, oh, maybe God didn't hear me the first time. That's why God, God's heart cried right now is for his children to grow up. We need to grow up. So he says, um, now we're talking about the difference between uh, uh, Christians. Let's go to Hebrews, um, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 12. We're talking about um, babies, in, babies in, the, in the Christian food. Ephesians 4, 12. He says something, he said, for the perfecting of the saints. He said first that the pastors, teachers, everybody is giving for a purpose for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to so all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of God. I'm going to 14. That's where is, I'm emphasizing right now. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see, when we are babies, we are tossed to and fro. Tossed to and fro. Who tosses us to and fro? Not just the, the enemy. The enemy tosses us to and fro. Also, by our lack of knowledge and ignorance, we are tossed to and fro. What tosses us to and fro? Every wind of doctrine. You hear this, you run after it. And there's no balance. Every doctrine of God is balanced. The grace doctrine is balanced by the truth of the, the word of God. So, but a baby can go to the one extreme or the other. If somebody is emphasizing one extreme, they will go there. So what is up? Every wind of doctrine, they are there. By the slate of men, they, you, are, you are, oh, um, the glory in that place. Oh, the experiences in that place. God wants you to be the carrier of his glory. God wants a change. Praise God. God wants you to change. He wants you to be the carrier of that glory. Not just the glory you get. There's nothing wrong with the glory we get when we gather together. But once God wants you to carry his glory 247, that you become that glory. When people are around you, they pick up that something is different. That's what God is wanting his children to be. And if all take our place, which is one of the things I'm going to talk, then the work will be, God's work will progress more and faster. Praise God. So the mature Christians, again, it says that in that uh, Ephesians 4, he says, God the Father, I want to read this. God the Father des desires that all of the believers, all his children will not remain babies, but will grow in Christ to match him in life, nature, expression, and function. Now let's go to John chapter 1, 12 and 13. John chapter 1, 12 and 14. John chapter 1. 
John chapter 1, 12 and 14. Chapter 1, 12 and 13. He says something here. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So number one, when we, belong, when we become children of God, God wants us to become sons of God. Children are different from sons. The Bible says in Galatians that a child, as long as it's a child, is also um, the guide and tell the child what to do. Even though that child is an inheritor, even though that child is a heir, it is, he has guide, guidance. He has people. He has nanny telling him, go and do your homework. Go and do this. Go and do this. That's what you do with children. But a mature person is over the house, takes over, takes over, takes over the, uh, the administration of the father's property, takes over everything. You can't tell a, a, a son what to do anymore you, because he knows what to do. There are differences. God wants us to become sons. God wants us to become sons. So, and as we, as we move into this, because the, the, the truth is that the world is in a bad state right now. It's getting worse and worse. And God doesn't, anytime I was discussing with some, somebody that everything that happens in the world, God always creates a demarcation between the people that know him and people that don't know him. During Noah's flood, what happened? God saved some people that know him and put them in an ark and the whole world was destroyed with flood. Every time from the fifth, um, fifth uh, miracle that signs and wonders in Egypt, God created a demarcation from the darkness. The children of Israel never suffered anything that is happening out there in the world. No more. So as the world was in darkness for three days, as Egypt was in darkness, the Bible recorded that there's light in the children of God's building. Their, their cattle were not destroyed. There were always a demarcation. That's how God works. But now, supposing that child of God is still imma is immature and do not know your right and will not sit up. That's why Christians are dying. That's why Christians die of diseases like the world. And that's not God's, our father's heart desire. It's not his best. His best is that we are not victims. We are victors. Not only in our personal life, but we are praying for people who are in this situation. Yeah, when we are newly born again, that's no, because you can't become born again and know everything at once. But if you've been born again for a while, it's time to ask yourself a question. Where am I in this work? What am I doing? What am I doing for God? Am I giving God pleasure in my growth? Or is God unhappy with me for being a baby for so long. And you remember again, part of these issues of babyhood, as I was discussing today, is lack of kingdom mindset. Me, 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 my family. And that's how children behave. Me, I will, I'm hungry, mommy. They will start crying until God gives them, until their mother gives them breast or food. Now, they don't care about other people. Are you a child? Or are you a mature Christian? Are you mature? Because that's the, dif that's the difference. So if, I'm, if all, everything about me is all about me, go to church, come back. When I go to church and I'm not ministered to, I even complain that I, well, I wasn't ministered to today. Meanwhile, I'm sitting on the bench. I'm not one of those that even cause other people to be ministered to. I am a bench warmer. Ask yourself a question. How long have you been in this journey? What is God expecting of you right now? The world needs Christians. The world needs the church, a church that is glorious, active, not a dormant church, not a dormant church. And, we, and because we know we are at the end time, it's not getting easier. So you need to be in a place where you believe God, that because of that demarcation, everything that happens, should, you should be exempt. If there's recession in the world, you should be exempt, as I was talking this morning, because you are an ambassador. Your kingdom, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, commonwealth of Israel. You, are not, you don't belong here. But if you believe that whatever is happening, can, you, you partake of it. It's going to happen according as you believe. May God help us in Jesus' name. So Ephesians 4, um, from, uh, 15. Ephesians 4, let me go back to Ephesians 4. I was reading from um, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, I read 14 and 15. We should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this word correctly, but you know 
there's a lot of deception in the world right now. A lot of deception. And people have been deceived. Some people, do you know that some people have even stopped going to church because of the wrong information, the misinformation they hear through YouTube and uh, uh, this thing. They just believe whatever they hear. They believe what they hear in the media. And they stopped. Oh, the media tells that there are some people whose business is just to bring down men of God to do this. They will hear and they will stop. Some people, when they, whatever is talking about giving to the church and all, they stop giving. You're a baby. You're a baby. Because there are certain things you know. Nobody will tell you certain things. When you know who you are, you are not to be moved by anything you hear. Somebody will wake up one morning and say, oh, is there? Even some people, as they're doing that YouTube, they're misquoting the Bible and they are believed. Because you that is listening, you don't even know your, your constitution. Your constitution is the Bible. You don't know. So that is what is happening. Praise the Lord. So now, this, uh, what is part of the things that will help us to grow up in God? Knowing the truth. Knowing the truth. And how do we know the truth? The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Knowing the truth is knowing Jesus. But then, Jesus is also the word of God. So knowing the word of God is knowing Jesus. We grow up by paying attention to the, to the articles, to the details of our constitution, the word of God. We grow up by knowing, knowing, knowing our right from our left, knowing the details of this, studying the Bible, not just skirmishing, you know, studying the Bible, not living like the people in the world. Some people, yes, we are all busy going to work. We do so many things, we are busy. When they come back, you've spent all the time at work. You're busy at work. But because this thing is not in your mind, instead of relaxing with the word of God, hearing a preacher, you put a worldly uh, whatever it is on the television to make you relax. 247 has passed. You've not really connected with your real kingdom. You've not connected with where, where you belong. How do you think you can function well in that place after so much neglect? If we're so busy, you spend from morning till night. When you come home, what are you supposed to do? You spend time. That little time you have, you make sure that you are, you are doing what you're supposed to do. Praise the Lord. So, but if the little time we have, leisure, we use other things to fill our time. Until you make out time, it's not automatic. Until you make out time for God, you will not have time for him. May God help us. So, so, um, Young men, now, uh, one of the things is knowing the truth, as I've mentioned. So, Jesus is the truth. Jo um, what does the Bible tell us in Joshua 1? So, it's not just reading. Joshua 1. Joshua 1, 8. Joshua 1, 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Do you see what helps us to grow? As we meditate, as we pay attention to the word, meditate therein day and night. He said we will observe to do. So our doing is connected to the meditation. Our doing is, is connected. Our observing to do, our intent to do is connected to how much time we are having the word in our mouth, thinking the word in our thoughts, pondering it, applying the word to our situation. When we read, we don't just read. We apply the word of God to our situation. What is God telling me to do now? How do I apply this word in, a, in my storm? You're facing a storm. You bring the word of God that has to do with storm. You meditate on it, how God delivers from the storm. That is it. He says, so he says, so you will observe to do according to all that is written therein. Not some. According to all. Everything. Our doing is connected to our paying attention, meditating, observing to do. He said this way, this is the way we are prosperous and successful. That's it. This is how we have good success. So that is part of our maturity. Make out time for God. Make out time. Make out time. Another problem Christians have is lack of discipline. Lack of discipline. Oh, fasting is now old-fashioned. It's all. But Jesus says when we fast, there's some Christians don't even know what fasting is all about. They don't know what it means to fast, to stay in God's presence, to experience his glory. Everything is easy, is quick. <laughs> we are supposed to, the lack of discipline is also one of the things I'm saying. What we watch is also based on lack of discipline. You spend two hours watching a film. How many hours did you watch, did you spend with uh, the Bible, with your, the word of God? 
How much time have you spent with him? You know, so these are things. Because I'm sorry, my brothers and sisters, the time, the time is so, we're in, in perilous times. We need to sit up, every single one of us. We need to sit up. Because until we sit up, we, we are not going to be victims in Jesus' name about what is happening. We need to know our right from our left. We need to know who we are. And not only that, the world needs help. We need to be the ones offering the help to, to the world, praying for them, praying for the sick, trusting God for their healing, using our faith to obtain healing, not just for us or for members of our family, but for others. The Bible says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that's where who we are. Going about doing good. So whenever we see anything, the work of the enemy, our job is to dethrone it. Our job is to make it right, bring the kingdom of God in that situation. But we can't do this when we are babies. We cannot. We can't do it when we are still children. God will help us in Jesus' name. So uh, NLT, let me just read NLT version of that Joshua 1.8. Because I, I did it in my, and I, I, I did it when I was reading and I was very, very, um, it's very straight. It says, study this book of instruction. You see, this is the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in, in it. Meditate in it, on it day and night. So you'll be sure. You see, that's how we can do by meditation. Only then, only when you've done these things will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Only then. Praise God. Only then. So, and you know the, another thing. We can also be busy for God and neglect our personal, our personal this thing, meditating in the word, having time with the word. That's why you see the fact that God uses you in an area. We were discussing just this morning. God can use you in an area and you'll be through you, crusade, people will be getting healed, people will be doing what. But if you neglect your personal time, personal meditation, personal time with God, the enemy can bring it into you. And you know it happened to, I think, a man of God, Kenny Hagin. He said it when he was ill. And God, he was asking God why he's staying in his body for so long. God told him that you need to do the same thing that you're preaching to others to do. Even though I use you to heal others, it's not automatic that you get it. So you need to do the same thing to obtain your own healing. You see how it works. So the, if tomorrow God is using us, we still need to do what God is telling us to do. So another way of maturing is continuing in the word, continuation. This journey is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not today I pray two days, then you don't pray again, you're not consistent again for the next one week. It's better even in the Christian way, because it's a marathon, it's better you pray even 30 minutes every day and you're consistent over a long call than to pray two hours in, 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 a, in, one, um, in one month and then you lay off. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. Praise God. So we need to be consistent. John 8, 31. Let's just go there. John 8, 31. John 8, 31. 31. Okay. John 8, 31. Jesus says, um, I read it before. He said, Jesus said to the people who have believed in, who believed in me. He said to the Jews, he believed in me. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. And you know the truth and the truth will set you free. Let's read it from King James. If you continue, King James uses the word, if you continue in my, okay. Um, if you continue in my word, then say Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? The Bible says that God's grace, um, it, um, it says, is every day we need the grace of God. Every day we need the word of God. Uh, physical food is the same. The word of God is spiritual food. There is nobody that can survive on a, on a um, sandwich once a week. You will die of malnutrition. But many Christians are like that with the word of God. If you just know it, that the way you eat physical food is the way the word of God feeds your spirit man. Is the word. But the word of God is soul food, your spirit food. So now, if you not neglect it, some, your spirit will be so malnourished, malnourished. It's because you don't see. That's why you think you're okay. You may be robust and doing well physically, but your spirit is malnourished. God will help us in Jesus' name. So that's why um, 
that's why we need to do this. Um, we need to feed ourselves. We need to be consistent. Continuation is if you continue. Continuation is the key to being a disciple. If you continue, if you continue, if you continue, if you continue, you need to continue. Acts 2 46. What did you say? Acts 2 46. Let's go there. Acts 2 46. It says, um, and they continuing daily. Do you see the word daily? Continuing daily. Do you see that word? Continuing daily. It's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. Make out time with God daily. Not some days. Make out time daily. If he needs you sacrificing some hours of your sleep, do it. Your life depends on what we are talking about today. Your life depends on this. Your life depends on this. Times are, perilous times are here. Make our time with God. He says, continuing daily with one accord, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meal with all gladness and singleness of heart. Praise God. Then, um, I think it's, okay, I've read 46. Let me go to 42 of that same scripture. He says, and they continue steadfastly. This is continued again. Steadfastly, without fail, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers, Continue steadfastly, continuously. So continuity is the key here. So we don't do and lay off and come back again. Or we live, uh, to, we live intensive praying only when we are fasting and praying. Please, we need to change. We need to make our time with God. Praise the Lord. We need to make our time with God. So now these are the things that will help us to mature. It will help us to mature. Now, the, do you know the truth? That Ephesians I was reading, Ephesians 4, um, Ephesians 4, 15. Let me go to Ephesians 4, 15. There's something I want to bring, bring out here. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Um, 11 to 15. Let me read 11 to 15. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. This is where God wants us to be for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the work of the body of Christ, till we all come, this is God's plan, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Jesus was our sample son. The whole, everything God is doing is for us to be like Jesus. We are supposed to be like him. So don't think of Jesus as, oh, he's, uh, no, we can't be. We can be like him because that's the whole idea. He's our sample son. He's our example. So fullness of Christ. Then he says that we should no longer be more, we should henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking in the truth in love may grow up. You see again? may grow up into him in all things, in all things, in all things, that we may grow up, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, in every area. That's the plan for us to grow up. Who are we growing up to? Which is the head, even Christ. Now, verse 16, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply it, According to the effectual working in the measure of every part. According to the effectual working in the measure of every part. So if some parts are not working well, do you know what will happen? A minute. One minute. Sorry, the disadvantage of doing this thing, God will deliver us from the house and we'll be in our place in Jesus' name. I had to answer for the door. So that's what we're talking about. So he says, by the effect, if according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. 
So if every part of us, we are not pulling our weight, we are making the work burdensome for the people who are pulling their weight. Think about it. If we are not pulling our weight, then we are, our slack is being picked by others who are now doing extra hard to make up our lack of effectiveness because it's a body. So you see now when I was talking this morning about being kingdom of God minded, it's not about us, our life. We're part of a body. So when we're not doing our work, when we're not doing things well, we are not doing well. It's affecting other people. So it says by the, by this, okay. It says, for, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, according to the, every, the effectiveness of the working of every measure of every part. So whether we are two, whether we are hand, if every part is not working well, it will affect the whole body. Just as you know in your physical body, your toe can make you uncomfortable and can keep you awake at night. The same thing with the body of Christ. So if we're not doing well, it's affecting the whole work. Praise God. So it says, make it increase unto increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So basically what this is saying is that when we grow up, when we are all in our place, it affects the work positively. It affects the work that people are even doing. You know, it affects other believers. It makes everything work faster and easier. And God is pleased. Think about it again as you being a parent. If your child is behaving like a two-year-old. A 40-year-old man is behaving like a two-year-old. You will think it's a curse. You will not be happy. So God is our parent, and he wants all of us to grow up. May God help us to grow up in him. In Jesus' name, let us pray.